Truly, Lord, you are our way maker. You are our way maker, oh God. You are our promise keeper. As you promise, oh God, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. You never leave us. You never forsaken us, oh God. We may not be there all the time, at all times, oh God, worshiping you, oh God, in spirit and truth, but you're still there waiting for us to come back, oh God. Lord, thank you for your grace and your mercy. Today, oh God, we ask that you will do as you please, oh Holy Spirit. Touch every heart, make us ready to receive your word, oh God, with clarity, oh God, and Lord, with healing to our bones, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good morning. It's been uh, a while since uh, we're here on behalf of our pastor. Uh, he's extending his greetings to you guys. We miss you so much. We love everybody. And uh, it is a joy in our hearts to be here. It is a joy in my heart to be here for the glory of God. Amen. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Truly, that God, God is already touching our hearts from the from the start. Amen. If we came here with uh, this longing in our hearts, I know that God is in control. Amen. 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 What's up? What's up, man? You think of my kids? Yeah. So how's everybody? Yeah. 
Are we all blessed? Amen. Amen. Truly that uh, we cannot, uh, it's year 2020. I think the last time I saw everybody was 20. 19, not 18. <laughs> 19, no, no. But uh, praise God, we are uh, uh, called by God to deliver His word today. And we have a lesson in humility. I have nothing uh, to share, but only God can share and give uh, instructions to all of us. Amen. So we declare in, in this year 2020, the month of, uh, of January, we are declaring and casting out visions. Amen. But visions, sabi nga po, uh, many are the plans in man's heart, but only the plan of God will be there in our lives. Amen. So we will declare that 2020 is Christ-centered. We will have Christ-centered unity and glorious victory. Can we declare that in our lives? We're just not going to cast visions upon visions without claiming and declaring that all of this will happen to us. Amen. And we want to be Christ-centered and with glorious victory because our God is the one that will give us all this victory. Amen. The God we serve is the one with great um, things. You know, the God of the impossible. The God of the impossible. If we are going through things in our lives today, and even in the past year, let us believe that God is the God of a turning points. He is the God that will give us breakthrough in our lives. We are in 2020, so 2019 is over. But in 2020, whatever God did not, uh, things that you are expecting did not accomplish, God will do it this year. Amen? With great expectation, we will ask God and we will believe that we are blessed. That, and we will believe that God is the one that will do all of this for us. Amen? Hindi po tayo, we are not going through life by luck. Good luck, diba? Hindi po tayo paswerte-swerte. We're not, the people of God is not the one that believes with luck. Because we believe that we are blessed. That God will bless us. Amen? Babe, hindi po pachamba-chamba ang buhay. Our life is not pachamba-chamba, but yung pagluluto natin, pacham. Diba? Our life is uh, is uh, blessed by God. Our cooking is blessed by God. Amen? Amen? The, all the, the husband, if you're the wife, you're cooking for your husband, they cannot say that it's not good because it is blessed by God. Amen? Our cooking will be good. Because he is our uh, provider. He will provide all good things. He is our way maker. Amen? Amen? So let us believe that. We always believe in Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 12 is good. Amen? 29, 11, don't, don't uh, uh, stop there. Because the, the verse 12, it says, you know, that like, if you seek him, you will do things. It's not, it, things are given by the Lord, not because um, he, he, he did promise it and he said he is a promise keeper, but things will be done according to our faith. Do we believe that? Everything will be done according to your faith. If your faith withered, fading, of course, God cannot, cannot give everything that He wants to give you. So every day we want to have our uh, the, the God that we will serve. We want to know Him more intimate, more uh, of His heartbeat. It's, it is the, His heartbeat that we are hearing, not our heartbeat, not our emotion, Lord, Lord, Lord. But it is what God is saying to us. Amen. That is always the important thing. This year. I will be blessed. Ito po ating, uh, I, oh, uh, me and Pastor made the declaration uh, while we are in the Philippines. We were there for three weeks and it was extended for a few more days because of the volcano. We are far from it, but the airport was uh, closed because of it. But praise the Lord, I camped in the airport because the three of them were booked and I was booked separate a few days after them. But when I dropped 
brought them off to the airport. I refused to go home. I brought everything with me, my luggage, everything. They made me go through the, you know, to the gate. I was there in the check-in counter. I was just sitting there. And the, the people are like, you know how they check your voucher. Like, when is your flight? The 20th. Oh, while well, you're here, because my family is there and I want to go with them. So I was so makulit, you know, you know, I'm so persistent. I need to be there. Well, ma'am, you see all these people, we need to finish all of them to check in and we'll see if there's somebody that will not show up. Okay, I'm willing, I'm just there. And then the first flight was full, that's pastor's flight, so they were booked. All of them are in the gate. And then they said, oh, eight, there are eight seats that are available in their flight. But then those people said, oh, it's only 15 more minutes, they'll be boarding, you're not gonna pass through the immigration. Uh, before you go, I said, I'll take my chance, just book me. And they don't, because the one I believe that God will do it for me is not the God that they have. That's what I'm thinking, but I'm so persistent. I said, just please put me on that flight and I will be with my family. They didn't, because they won't listen to me. They put me on the second flight. But then I made it to their meet. <coughs> they were still there. I said, I told them. But anyway, God is good, because I was able to go to the second flight. We were able to see each other in Korea for five hours. I was not there, but I was here. They were here at 1 uh, p.m. Saturday. I, was, I arrived at 8 p.m. that Saturday. But God is good because we declare that we will never give opportunity for failure in this year, 2020. Me and Pastor talk about it and we look at each other because there are so many things and we said to each other, because you know, we went there for our wedding and a lot of people we didn't invite him. We didn't invite his uh, relatives, nor my second relatives, you know, like the second cousin. I only, I only have my family and he has his own family, like just his uh, nephews, nieces, not even his uh, uh, aunts and aunts and he has 10, you know, you know that and you know the story of his uh, family, but we invited two out of the 10. So the rest are mad at us, right? And I experienced being slapped on my head by one of his aunt. And it is, it is a privilege opportunity, and me and Pastor were saying that we will not give an opportunity for failure this year. So, the following Sunday, we went to Pampanga for our service, but then the following Sunday, we were planning to go to Papanatuban. We didn't go to the service because the conviction of God through pastor is so strong. He cannot even sleep. And he was rebuked, we were rebuked, that we need to reconcile with these people, that we are not even unaware that things are not uh, right in our heart. Like even it's 20 years ago, it's still there. Because why you didn't invite them? So it was so strong. So we went there. The, actually, the night before we were there, they didn't welcome us. They didn't even bring up, you know, invite them in, us in the house. And it's okay. And we and and we know from our heart we say something that did not please the Lord because we say, you know, they're the one that did us wrong. And I even told Pastor, it's so hard to be plastic. The wrong, uh, you're pretending to be okay, but you are not okay. So, you know, Pastor. But God rebuked us strongly that you have to leave your offering to the altar and reconcile to the people that you have offended. Or offended Jew. You have offended, but they offended Jew. It's harder. It's harder. Believe me, it's harder when you know that you are the right one. <coughs> but it's not of you. So it was a Galatians 2.20. It is not. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it is not I, but Christ. But if you say you're crucified and you die daily, you have to die daily. Amen. You have to die in your flesh. Yes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore. So when you went there, I hugged that tita, and she did this to me. And I was like, I hugged her back, and she still did it. 
But then after all the explanation, Pastor can tell you the rest of the story because uh, after all the explanation, the the his uncle that um, that attempted to rape his sister three times. That's the reason why is the one that says everybody has has an opportunity to change. So for us, that's already admitting his fault, and for. For me, when they have, when we had back, they didn't go back to Rocky, but I still hug her, and we say, um, we, we are very sorry. And it is so hard. But then the release, when you felt the release of the feeling in your heart, and God has given us that that assurance that you, now that you did what I told you to do, what I instructed you to do, you will never have an opportunity for failure this year. Because you are going back to the US and you need to you know, set that standard. So, Pastor will be here next month, uh, February, to, be, to preach here. Hopefully, he'll preach uh, this teaching because he preached that, uh, that we will never be able to have opportunity for failure. Amen? So, Yan po ang declaration natin that we will be blessed. Hindi swerte swerte. Pagpamalain tayo ng Diyos. This is the year of breakthrough and restoration for God's people. The moments, the tough moments are coming or it's coming or you're going through tough moments. Take it as your opportunity to grow. It's a growing time. Amen? So, let us, uh, that's my introduction. So, let's go to my slide. The fight for the play, place of first. God has given us this, and this message is to fight for the first place in our lives. But applying the God first principle. It's not, you're fighting for the first in your life, applying the God's first principle. So, the applying God's principle, it is in uh, Colossians 1.15. So, sabi po, the, it is unchangeable truth that God is always first. Unchangeable po yan. Nobody can change that truth that God is always the first in our life. Amen? Wala pong dapat makapagbago yan sa buhay natin. This is our first. That we will put God first in our lives. Amen? The question is, who is really the one that we always give the first thing, the first priority in our lives? Who or what? Diba? Sino ang unahin mo? Who, sino at ano ang unahin ko sa buhay ko? Who and what? will I do first? Of course, we will do first the God's word and we will do first our worship to God. Two things, it's always two things that God is teaching us is to to worship Him and to read His word. Give Him our first. Amen? God should be the first and God will help us and build us up. Amen? So, many people today, ito po yung Colossians 1, 15, God is preeminent. Christ is the invisible, the visible God, the image of the invisible God. He ex existed before anything, was created, and is supreme over all creation. For though, for through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms, on earth, and he made the things we see and the things we cannot see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, authorities. Amen. So yet we that's how he that's our God. So we will build the foundation. So as I'm saying earlier, many people are being pulled into 
all directions by all sorts of inward and outward needs and demands in life, will or imagine, and they become the empty souls. We don't want to be the empty souls. A lot of people today, they are so busy with the call of our inward and outward demands. The inward demands is the ecology. It's always I, me first, I want to do things first. That's your inward demands, ourself. But that, there's nothing wrong of fulfilling what you want for yourself. But you need to know what is your priority. If it is me, if it is God. So if we put God first, and then God will do everything for us. The outside, the outward demand is um, the one that uh, gets our attention. The world will uh, entertain us. He will ask us, you know, for all the jobs. Those are the outward demands of our time. Amen. The world will entertain us, but will not help us to cope or overcome our problems. We will always be entertained by the world, but at the end of the day, we still miserable. So we want to put God first in, as we open our eyes in the morning, Lord, you are my first. And everything will fall into places. Amen? So outward, inward demands, both demands wants to be the first in our lives. But it's all right to have plans and goals, but if we have to develop the mentality that I want my God first in my life. The mentality that, that God will be the first in my life. We have to eradicate the mentality of me first. We become self-centered and selfish. We need to develop uh, that uh, mentality of being uh, first to humble ourselves, to forgive people, to serve others. That's the mentality that we need to acquire from our invisible God because of these attributes. Amen? He is the one that called us. It is not us. Amen? So the world says develop the me first lifestyle, but the Bible says develop the God first principle in our lives. Amen? So the unchangeable truth that God is first, God is first by virtue, and he who is and what he does. The plan of God in our lives is won by knowing God. So your full declaration natin, that was one year. Know your God. Daniel 11.32, yung pinisok po natin ba? So wag po natin kakalimutan yun. Know our God. And when you know your God, nothing will shake you. You will be immovable, unshakable. Amen? Sabi, be immovable, be steadfast, be firm in your faith, because you know that your God is faithful. When you know your God, what else can break you? He is the God of breakthrough. When the enemy, when you declare something in your life, you know that the enemy is alarmed. And guard yourself. I was talking to Sister Josie, because Sister Josie, uh, glory to God, is now called to be one of our uh, public ministers. Amen? And I was telling her, when God called you, you declare that you are the vessel of God. Be prepared. Put on the armor of God. In the very last second of your time to stand, the enemy can still do something. But he cannot penetrate if you are covered by the blood of God. He cannot stand that. The anointing of God, things that we cannot do, when you have the anointing, you can do it. Amen. So always take care of the anointing. Yeah. Amen. The anointing of God is the one that God is imparting to us. We didn't even, you know, by the grace of God, we got, we received Him as our Lord and Savior. Accompanied by it is the anointing because He is the anointed one. And if the anointed one is residing inside your heart, you are anointed. Amen. But you have to be humble Amen. to be anointed. Yes, Lord. Amen. So, he lost his anointing, and even the Spirit of God flew. Iniwanan po si Zoom. Why? Because of his arrogance, his pride. But David, the man who is after man's own heart, says, I will never touch that anointed. Irregardless, what that anointed one is doing, 
he is still anointed by the Lord. And whoever touches the anointed of God is the one that will uh, suffer consequences. Let God deal with the person that has that issue. Because for me and pastor, we learn. We learn to submit. We learn to submit to the people that were given above us. Why? Because it is the test of our faith and obedience to the word. Because this is our uh, time to grow. That we know that it is not I, but you. It is not me, Lord. It is you. Amen? But God called people to help us. God called us to help each other, to love each other. When one part of your body is aching, all oh, is aching. Kami nga, matkalitihan. Sakit ng kalitihan ay sakit ng buong katawan. When your pinky is hurting, your whole body is aching. When your tooth is aching, somehow, you cannot even function. Amen. So might as well, let us help that one part of our body to heal. And that's what we do, right? We go to our doctors, but we have a great healer can heal us. Amen. So God will give us that. The plan, he is preeminent. So let's go to the next. So let's do it a little faster. God is a creator. Amen. I don't need to know everything. As long as I have God, I know everything. Why? Because he knows everything. Right? So this is giving our dependency that we have nothing to boast. We have nothing but God. Amen. In the beginning, God is God created, right? So the earth was formless. He created. Let there be light. He said, "Let there be light," and the light, uh, and there was light. Amen. So what else do we? We the things that we will develop for this year is really to be intimate with the Lord. Because if you know your God, if you know your God. You know everything. Why? Because you go to your closet, you pray to the Lord, you read your word, the word of God. He will give you rebuke, reproof, and he will give you all the instruction. Yes. The word of God is used for building up. Amen? But it's up to us how we take it. You don't read the word of God and, and, and thinking of somebody else. This is not for me. This is for this one. No. When you read it, it's for you because God lets you read that. So then ask the wisdom of God how, how to do it. Amen. So there are other attributes of God. God is eternal. God is immutable. God is, um, what else? Faithful. Amen. God is just. God is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. All of these attributes it's been over and over we are hearing about our God. This is the God that we serve. This is the God that we are adoring and worshiping. No other God like our God. Amen? Amen. There is no God like you. It's yes. only Jesus. Yes. God the Father, God the Son, God yes. the Holy Spirit. Yes. It is this Trinity that we worship and adore because they are eternal Immortal, immutable. Just, just, just jot down po yung mga verses. And, and we know that we will do nothing wrong. When we stand for the truth, the truth will set us free. Amen? Amen. So God created us to be responsible, not in control. Dalawang bagay po yan. There's always two things. But God has created us to be responsible. Responsible for what? Responsible for your own self, for your own faith, for your own relationship with Him, how you build up yourself, and not be in control. In control of God, in control that, you know, like in control of other things. You want to be responsible. You are entrusted by the Lord with the anointing. Then, responsible enough to take care of that anointing. You are responsible for the things that were entrusted to you. 
kasi po, we are called and trusted. Even this church, we are just um, servants of God that were entrusted by God to our uh, Bishop Brother Eddie William Lewa to use the pulpit to be used by the Lord. And we are trying our best to be responsible enough to fulfill our mission and vision through the ministry. But God is always our first. Even the ministry is not the one that we committed ourselves. Always remind yourself, we, pastor, we always go out when things are, we always do road trips. And we love road trips because it clears our mind. It gives us time to talk to each other and to talk to God. And I always remind him when things go tough and you are in the edge of quitting, that's when you have to go back to your first love. Because your first love is when uh, you accepted God as your Lord and Savior. And for us, for pastor, I always remind him, Pastor, when God has called you to be full-time in the ministry, we don't know anyone in this city nor in New York. It is between you, me, and God. And we decided. So now when things are going tough, are we going to quit? No, because it is not it is not the church. It is not the people. We didn't commit to the people. We didn't commit, commit to the church. We commit ourselves to the Lord. So nakakaya po, sabi ko sa it is, I, it's unbearable for me to know that you will quit because, just because. So you have to stand your ground as long as God is still calling you and allowing you to preach and to be used by the Lord. Stand. Because the word of God said, stand. When everything else, you know, are falling apart, stand. Stand on the word of God. Stand with your integrity. You will always hear pastors say that your integrity will protect you. Amen. So, yan po. The most important thing in life is what my Lord will say about me. I don't, yan po ang aking natutunan. I am more of thinking what God is thinking about me so that I can be responsible for all my actions. It is not when I'm not going to waste my time uh, asking God, you know, what is Sister Miriam thinking about me? I don't know her before. She can think all she wants. She can think everything about me. But for me, what is my God thinking about me? Because God looks through the heart. Yeah. Through your heart, it will expose. Because I have Guard your heart because out of it are all issues of life. It's so, it's so good to read the word of God. Why? Because it gives you warnings. And that it was written because it is important. And when you read it, to, if it's written twice, three times, it is very, very important. So, take note of it. We have to develop our intimate relationship with God. Don't treat God as our personal assistant. That we are like, Lord, uh, I need this. Do this for me. You know. No. God is the one that will plan for us, do things for us, and so we will just obey. Obedience is always harder because sometimes it's hard to obey if you have other things to do. But God says, put me first and I will take care of it. Sabi po sa Matthew, next, ano nga, ano, sabi po sa Matthew um, 6.33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. It didn't say that if you seek first his kingdom and righteousness and all the things will be added to Sister Josie. God didn't say that. It is personal. When he said those words, he is very serious. Now, my daughter and my son, seek me first. Seek my kingdom. Live in my kingdom. It is written. Let your will be done on earth. And it is, it is in your kingdom. We are not going to wait until we 
done to experience the kingdom of God. Even here on earth, we can experience kingdom living. Why? Because we are serving our king. Our king is here living in us. And we should be able to enjoy the presence of the king. When you are in the presence of God, nothing can really uh, touch you. Sabi po, put on the armor of God. Right? When do you put off the armor of God? This is a, it is a, it is a command. Always put on the armor of God. But when do you take it off? Anyone? You take it off when you are in His presence. When you are in His, in your closet, enjoying the presence of God. Because when you are in the presence of God, the enemy cannot touch you. Not even your thought life. You pray in the spirit. And the enemy cannot even understand that. And then you can put off your armor. But when you go out to the world, put on your armor. Because this is the one that will reflect that Jesus lives in me. Amen? The practical application of putting God first. God blesses those who put him first. The point is in Matthew. That's enough. So God first principle in our relationship, love him above all else. De develop God honoring relationship in marriage, family, brethren in faith, friends, neighbor, and other people. So we put God first in all our relationship, and it will succeed. It will be victorious. Our married life will be victorious because God is the center of our marriage. Amen. Our family will be victorious because Jesus is Lord over our family. Amen. Amen. Our relationship with our with our friends, our neighbors, and other people. Yan po. Sabi nga, love your enemy. Yung other people po, yung enemy. <coughs> other people. Yung mga hindi natin gusto, pero sabi nga, Lord love them. And we love them. Amen. Amen. So next, God first principle in our Daily calendar, personal devotional time with the Lord. Where is God in our calendar? Kung po ba bubuksan ng Lord ang ating calendar? Everybody, some loves to buy a, a calendar every year. Is God there in your devotional time with God? Is God there in your everyday appointment with the Lord? 15 minutes today, I wake up from 6 to this time is God. Amen? God first. So, how... Does a God first calendar look like? This is an The God first principle in our weekly calendar. Do not miss the weekly corporate church worship service, the daily service. Amen. So fellowship, the fellowship of the believers. Next, the God first principle in our hobbies and entertainment. What we read, what we watch, what we do in our free time. Amen. So, because the, the world can attract us and all the other things. But some people, uh, let us be wise to put God first, even in our hobbies and entertainments. Wag po tayo magpa-entertain sa world na nakakalimutan na po natin ng Lord. Amen? Kailangan po yung habi natin, we are, di ba, a lot, a lot of people loves to read. Then read those that will develop our, our uh, relationship with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, yung kasunod po, God, first principle in our plans, those thoughts, words, and deeds. By trusting the Lord, wholeheartedly acknowledging Him in everything. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Deal not to your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path straight. Amen. So if we put God first in all our plans, all our thoughts, all the words and deeds, trusting God, there will never, never be an opportunity for anyone to have failure at all. Because God is the one that will plan for us. Amen. Amen. So, God first principle is to trust Him. Put Him first. Amen. So, the next one, Matthew. Yeah. 
The spirit of our age is consumerism. Ayan, hindi daw po consuming consumption. The spirit of our age. Yun po, we are very much consumed of a lot of things. The struggle of our age is carnality. Yun po, the struggle daw po of uh, this time, of our, in this time we're living, is carnality. A lot of people struggle because of the those uh, temptations of carnality, which is the last year in the world. All of those things and conditions. And also the stress of our age is compulsiveness. Stress, na stress. Very stressed. We are so stressed. Why? Gusto ko bilhin yun. Bilhin mo ko yun. Gawin mo ko yan. But I don't have any more money to buy it. But then I want it. Then when you look on the internet, on Amazon, it's everything. is there. I want that. And that's the temptation. You don't plan. And that's the stress of your age. These are the people that doesn't have a genuine relationship or they do not put God first. So they are struggling because their plan is not according to the plan of God. And so put God in your plans. So the super, super superficiality of our age is conformity to the world. So many of the church people today allow the world to be God, let God disciple us. So, next habit. Malika ko lang po ng context. We'll talk about the about principle in our house and entertainment. Sabi po, we need to be responsible and accountable in our personal and private life. Christians are like eagles. Eagles. We are compare, compared to the eagles. The eagles eat the uh, all this, um, the, the line of fresh meat, those are the ego. And the ego, when we are, when the Christians, for us Christians, is the living word. It's the word of God. It needs to be habitual for us. Having na po natin to eat the word of God. And we are not those uh, witre, ano po yung witre sa English? Vultures. So, the, they eat dead meat. Days. We as Christians eat the fresh living word of God and we want to enter always the flow zone where we can relax, neglect being stressed by the social media and or be productive and creative. So we put God first. Amen. Amen. So this is po. Dito po. This is very important. God first principle in our finances. Practice the biblical principle of fighting and honoring God in our first fruit. So I put some Proverbs 3, verse 9 to 10 in Living Bible. Honor the Lord by giving him the first part of all your income, and he will fill your barns with wheat and barley and overflow your wine baths with the finest wine. A new wine, so I put some NIV, the Pasunan Kuyan. So NIV, I put that honor the Lord your God with your wealth. With the first fruit of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your barns will be brimmed to a new wine. Lagi po, it's very good to have a new wine. Taste the new wine, not the old wine. Amen? So, all, God always commands us to do something, but He always back up His command with so much blessing. It is his character. Nasa, alam na po ng Lord yun. When he said, do this, I will give you this. Alam po yung Lord eh. He is very uh, rewarding. Yeah. When he said, honor God with your wealth, then you honor him. Then your words will be, go, be overflowing. Hindi po, wala pong talo sa Lord. You will always win. When we put God first, we're always in the winner's side. Amen? Amen. Who wants to be in the winner's side? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. Let us give God a clap of praise. Always have a good one. Good one for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't don't worry about things na binibigay po ng Lord. The world will always mislead us and help us. God is the only one that can give us everything. Everything? Amen. So God
that first principle. So no fight for the first place. Maggie first. So first group is Apeya. So Samala Kai one six, Abe San. His master, if I am a father, where is your honor? Is the honor to me? If I am a master, where is the respect to me? Says the Lord Almighty. So in the field, God is giving us and always gives us memories. And uh, those that have questions about um, tithes and offerings, <coughs> one of our uh, 15 declarations of faith is tithes and offerings. It is not because the church needs, needs it, no. Because God commanded us to do it for our to it's a test of our obedience. It is not the test of how much we can give, but it is the test that we can do it. But because God is our first, then we will honor him with our first. Amen. And he said that he will protect. God says, give then have it verse eleven and twelve, and I will protect. I will protect your putaputaido sa Malacay para yung putaputaido ng ministro o para pray sa bibig na don. I will protect your farm, your grave from from any pest. And you can apply that. I will protect your family. I will protect your health. I will protect everything that concerns you. If you put me God, put God first in everything. Amen. So this year, 2020, I will put God first because I don't want any failure to come near me. It will always be victorious. Amen. And I will win for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Fight for God's first place in your life. Whether people recognize it or not, God is first. And He will remain first. Amen. Si Pastor po, second lang sa buhay ko. Ay, dalawa beses ko po siya tinapang. So, na natawag ko po niya, rinig niyo ko yung bawa ko ng pastor. But he knows that he is only my second. And God, and, and pastor will say the same. Why? Because our marriage will be nothing. It will fail if we, it will be us before God. It will be chaotic. So, he will not fight for his place of being first because that is forever established. He is the creator. He did it first. Before the before everything else, he is here. Amen. All of us are simply given an opportunity to recognize and fight for God's rightful place in our lives. It is an opportunity. It is your free will to receive God, the Lord, as your personal Savior. And it is an opportunity given to us to receive God. And if you recognize and fight that God is the one that's supposed to be the first in your life, that you put him in his rightful rightful place in our lives, and in everything we think, desire, plan, and do, is for every individual. Alam niyo po yan? What else can we ask for? What, what other things we want from the Lord? He is first and fight for it. We have to fight that God is first. When you're when somebody's distracting you to do what you're supposed to do for the Lord, tell them my God first is your place. So God will bless the work of your hand. Amen. Amen. So next at the AM, we long to discover our sense of worth and value that we'll only find in fulfilling and having the right relationship with God. That people that I am Sometimes you feel that, parang some, you're dry, something is missing, something is not there, because you are caught up with things. You are so busy not knowing, but your relationship with God is a little off, you know? So that it says that you can only find its fulfillment. He is the only one that can fill the void in our hearts. When men fell into sin, that sense of worth and value is diverted towards self-fulfilling. Nang po magkasala yung tao. It was it was so good to live in the time of uh, Adam and Eve, right? But when 
when the man fell in his sin, there's already that um, sense, uh, the value, the worth, they already saw themselves naked, right? They already had that awareness. And then they want to have that self-fulfillment outside God's will. But God said, you know, if you put me first, you put me in the right place in your life, I will put you in your right place in my kingdom. Amen. He already prepared a place for us. In his kingdom, there are so many rooms. And we want one of them. One of those. Amen. God is coming near. The end time signs are there. But we want God to come and we will be found faithful, fulfilling, and putting him first in our lives. Amen. We are not going to struggle to put a lot of things because God is saying, I need to be that naked that I come to this world and naked I will go back. But we want to have that intimate relationship with our God. Know your God. Sabi po in Jeremiah 22, sabi sabi, madami po yung pinaparimind sa ating testimony. Have a heart that knows your God. Always. Amen. Examine, examine yourself. Next, Ate Ea. So our, uh, it should be our putting God first in our lives, it should be convictional. We need to have that conviction. You must worship the Lord your God and serve only Him. That's the scripture said. And then the next one. <coughs> conviction is good. When things that you do doesn't you think it's not gonna do ano po yan, yung makakasira when you doubt it? It is not of God. But if it's something that it will, um, it is for, you will know that it is God when it will develop your relationship with Him. So it needs to be convictional. And the next one, it needs to be intentional. Like, see, you will put Him first in your life, in your life, it will, he will be in the rightful place in your life. It needs to be intentional. Sabi po sa Isaiah, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. Intentional. You want to be blessed? Put me first. You want me to bless you? Let the conviction of God be upon us. Amen? It's intentional. Amen. Susunod po. Kaunti na lang po. Amen. needs to be devotional. Yeah. Kailangan po, we have to devote ourselves. We want Him to be first. Give our time to God. Read His word. Amen. And next, Ate. rightful place of being first in our lives in everything. It should be devotional. It should be convictional. It can be, needs to be intentional. Amen? Amen. And these are the two things that we need to remember. There are unchanged, there is an unchangeable truth. Wala pong makakabago. It is there. It is established that he is first. God is first. The ultimate challenge in our lives is how to put Him first. Putting God first. That's the challenge. But we were given, you know, things, instruction. If we go to the Word of God, we know how to put Him first. Because why? Bakit po ba natin ilalagay ang Diyos sa school na lagi sa buhay natin? Why? Because we want to be blessed. And the presence of God is always there for us. Amen. I will not do anything because for the sake of doing it. I will do it because I love my God. I will do it because I know that God 
will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I will do it. I will put my God first because I know with God all things is possible. I will do it because God is the source of my strength, my life. He is the one that will give me victory. Amen? More of him. More of him. Less of me. Less is me. In the presence of God. Less of our, you know, what is our intention. The less we the want, the more we get from the Lord. Amen? So make a healthy boundaries, divine boundaries. Sabi po, nung isa natin, one of our uh, EMB, Pastor Alex Garcia, sabi po sa kanyang um, pagkabuwihan pagka, ng opportunity to talk to him. And I know people, some of you has uh, Facebook, you can see his posting. I'm so blessed every time I see even just one statement from their convictional, from their, uh, ano yan yung kanilang uh, devotion reflection from their Bible reflection. I'm always blessed. And I chew it because it's very, very good. Sabi po, guard your attachment. If you are not watchful in the man, we can get so emotionally attached to just anyone and anything so easily to a point that we begin to become detached. <coughs> when our attachment to people, to our emotions, to our God is first before our God, unknowingly, we are not even, we don't even notice it that we are detached from our God, that you're attached to the Lord. So, yet po, this is a warning and an encouragement for all of us that to be victorious in this year, to give God our first so that everything we will do, it will always give glory to the living God. Never give or neither place a uh, devil a foothold in your life. Never give him an opportunity to come into your life. Because God is first, and He's always going to be the first in my life. Amen? So let us give God a clap of praise. Hallelujah. And I'm our spiritual director. The greatest and noblest achievement of a person here on earth is to know his creator personally and truthfully, to love him wholeheartedly and passionately, and to serve him faithfully with integrity and excellence until he or she stands before him on judgment day. This is a principle that we should adopt and always remember and memorize. Because things, we can be distracted, but God said, put me first and you will be immovable. And you will, you know, God is the God that give us um, the strength. He is our refuge in times of need. He is always a present help in times of need. He is our healer. Name it. What do you need today? Put him first, and your needs will be met with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us all stand. Hallelujah. God is first in our lives. Let's hold him, bless him in spirit and in truth with all our hearts. When we worship God, it is because he is God. Those people that know that were here before when I am worshiping, they always encourage people, praise your God because of everything he did for you. Praise your God. Give him a clap of praise. Ten seconds, how many, how much you want to give him praise, give him. Because of everything he did for you. You are standing because of your God. We are alive because of our God. Nabubuhay po tayo dahil hindi dahil sa atin. Nabubuhay po tayo dahil inalaw ng Diyos na tayo po'y buhay. Amen. We are alive except because of us. 
God allows us to live. He is the one that allows us to walk in this earth. He is the one that is breathing in us. It is up to us to accept and put Him in the first place in your heart. You worship Him because He is the Creator. He is the Word of God. Don't be distracted by your surroundings when you are worshiping. It is Him alone. It is Him alone. Exalt Him. Exalt Him in your life. He is the image of the invisible God. First born of creation he is the first. He is the first, the last, the one who has more. Let us sing it again. He is the image. He is the image of the invisible God. The first firstborn of creation. He is the first, the last, the one who matters more. The who is sustainer of all together?
there's conversation giving, there's a, a, lot, a lot of giving that is mentioned actually. But that will come from the 90% that remains uh, after you give the 10% of your life. And just like what you had also mentioned, when we obey and we are and we give our that not what God has commanded us to do in tithing, amen. God will protect everything that concerns us. Our family, amen. Our job, everything that we do will prosper. Amen. And uh, God also said that yeah, uh, He will not bring any sickness and diseases in our family, in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. And He is the way maker. He is the God, the uh, uh, promise keeping God. Amen. And He changed not. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. before, even in this generation. God will prosper each and every one of us. Amen. But God only looks at the heart of his people. Amen. We should be reminded of that. God looks at the heart in our heart. Yan po yung ating puhunan, yung ating puhuso. So I was just like, uh, want to remind each and every one of this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning verse 6 and 7, it says here, Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man, in verse 7, should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Even though we give the third part, but if our heart is crying in giving that, or maybe nakadalim tayo ng puso natin, amen? Still, uh, God looks at the heart. So we know what what it, uh, what it should mean, right? So let's just obey the word of God and everything. Sabi niya pa in on, He will supply everything that you need in your life. Amen. And He is a faithful God, and uh, He will never leave us nor forsake us. And what He has said, to the family. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you are ready, and also since this is our fourth uh, Sunday, in, this, uh, in our church we also have the, the I Care Compassion Ministry. Amen. And that the uh, I Care Our mission. I just wanted to uh, to read the mission of I Care. The mission is to respond to the specific needs of identified individuals in the community in obedience to God's second commandment, which is love your neighbor. And our vision is we are an institution respected and supported by other organizations impacting community transformation. So uh, it just only means that uh, our mission is to reach out those who are, you know, those who are hurting, those who are in the hospital, those who are... <coughs> so we should, have, uh, we should uh, do this. So in our giving, in our giving, this could be used in, you know, basically for your kapatid, or for uh, going out and... Marami pong bagay na pwede mong matulungan na That's I can do this. Amen? And I believe, and uh, you are... Uh, we don't need to call each one of you to be a member of I Care. This is part of our being a child of God. Amen. We should have compassion not only for the lost that we reach out with our uh, with our tithing, but also for those who are hurting. 
not your wants, but your needs, just like what he had said in his word. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you so much for today. Because we believe that you are here in this place. God is here. God knows everything. Nothing we can hide from you. Even though in our tithing, he knows. Hallelujah. And Lord, we look at this uh, envelope, Panginoon, that we are about to give. Para sa aming pagsunod sa iyo. Para sa aming pag-ibig sa iyo, Panginoon. And because of our love for those who are lost. Because we know and we believe that this tithes will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. Lord, we thank you. And I believe, Lord, you will touch each and every one by noon if they are not in capacity right now to give because they don't have the job. We know, Lord, that you are preparing the best for them. That the job that you have appointed to them, O oh God, is already there. And they only need to, to give, to put you first in their lives, O oh God. For we know you will not fail us, O oh God. Right now, Lord, we claim it. We claim it in Jesus' name. And I decree and declare financial breakthrough yes. is flowing, is coming, and it is now ready to each and every one in this place, yes. O oh God. Lord, we thank you so much and I pray for those who handle these finances. <coughs> Give them the wisdom and the knowledge <coughs> on how they would manage these finances. Lord, maraming salamat po, Panginoon. We thank you so much and we cannot outgive you in our giving, O oh God. Hallelujah. For you have given even your life for us, for our salvation. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise, the highest adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs>
Are we all blessed? Amen. Yes. Thank you, Mama.